This episode of Test Drive is brought to you by EV Duty and their smart home charger. And by Ash Gregoire, with 30 dealers across North America and over 3,000 cars in stock. It has been a very long time that I have wanted to drive a car like this because it is pretty difficult to get your hands on a Tesla, especially if you're a journalist. You pretty much have to go out and buy one if you want to be able to feature it on a video like this or find a friend who's got one. And it just hasn't happened up until now. Our spotlight today and a very thorough in-depth review going over everything about this car is on this 2016 Tesla Model S 85D. Now, if you're new to Tesla, like me, this being the first time I've even been inside of one, there are some things to know. When it comes to this generation of Model S, the numbers on the back, that means how many kilowatt hours the battery is. So makes sense, this one is an 85 kilowatt hour battery. And the D means a dual motor. We've got a motor up front and one in the back giving us all wheel drive. Now you could get a performance model that would put a P at the front of that, which should have a little bit more power be quicker off the line but we don't have that one this one makes the most sense if you're buying a vehicle that you want to have fully electric to go about 426 kilometers without having to charge up and have all the features that you would want out of a pretty much mobile computer on wheels and because of the design of the model s the battery pack is actually located along the bottom of the vehicle in between the front and rear axles making it very easy to swap the battery packs out now the battery itself weighs about 1200 pounds pretty heavy but it makes up the floor of the vehicle that gives it a very low center of gravity it also adds to the rigidity of the passenger cabin and has a better weight distribution since the weight is pretty much in the middle of the vehicle it handles and performs really well so there is a lot to like about this vehicle yes it's heavy yes the batteries cost quite a bit of money that's pretty much the bulk of the cost of this vehicle is that battery pack but having 426 kilometers out of this is more than enough than you need for your day-to-day -day driving now in 2017 tesla updated this they had a facelift they changed the front end to make it look more like the new at the time model x and there will be a facelift for the 2022 models again the interior is getting updated but this is the original look for the model s you do have a frunk that is a front trunk you have some storage ability in the front here you can open it up either from the infotainment system inside or your key shaped key fob the rear lift gate is power operated we have front and rear park distance control and it's the first vehicle i've driven that actually shows you in numbers how close you are to an object gives it in centimeters and i imagine probably inches in the united states but that gives you a much better idea of how close you are to something than just some arbitrary square on the screen with a color this model s also has power folding mirrors retractable door handles hid headlights the summon feature for parking if you use the tesla app it'll find you in a parking lot and it also has the basic level autopilot which is more or less lane keep assist blind spot monitoring and active cruise control and this video would not be possible without our friends at ash gregoire they're letting us feature this vehicle this week i have it for the entire week so i get to really experience what it is like to drive a tesla you can find out more about this specific car if you want to buy this one or the other teslas they have in stock ash gregoire has 30 dealerships across north america with over 3,000 vehicles in stock chances are they're going to have a vehicle for you and if you go to ashgregoire.com slash nile that's my name n-i-l-e then you can get a small discount if you actually buy a car from them and it helps us out too it shows them that people are watching our content and they like what they see at ash gregoire so big thanks to them i really appreciate the support and it gives us an opportunity to drive something that has been on my list for so long now now, Tesla is the type of company that doesn't want to give away too much information. There is a lot of data online about how much power this vehicle actually produces. If you go online, you're going to get different numbers for different markets and just different numbers in general. The numbers that I have for this 85D, we have about 311 kilowatts of combined power or about 417 horsepower, which is good for 658 newton meters of torque or 485 pound feet. Tesla says that this vehicle would do 100 kilometers from zero in about 3.8 seconds, which is pretty quick. I mean, it's some of the fastest vehicles we've tested, and this is a fully electric four-door sedan. So it is a very quick vehicle. 
the all-wheel drive system would be great. It's not snowing today, which is awesome. We are finally out of winter here on test drive, and we actually do have summer tires on this, so have a little bit more fun when we're on the road. But that's what you get with this specific car. We will talk at the end a little bit more about a buyer's guide to go over anything else you might be interested in. If you're purchasing a Tesla Model S, we'll go over some of the details that you need to know. Now, like, I'm going to be honest here, I cannot go over absolutely everything there is to know about this Tesla Model S. We would be here for hours, and I would probably still miss things because there is so much with this vehicle. It is outstanding just really how much of a computer on wheels this vehicle truly is. Even though it's five years old, I mean, you think about today's Teslas, the new ones that are coming out, they have even more, and this is already pretty much overkill for anything else that we featured here on Test Drive. So it is incredible how much tech is in this vehicle so i will try to get to absolutely everything that i can and still make it you know worthwhile to watch if not we're going to be here all week now this vehicle has leather seats with a leather dashboard and there's some suede mixed in headliner and a little bit of the dashboard personally it would have been nice if the entire dashboard was this suede material i do find that the leather reflects a little bit too much of the sun as i'm driving down the street kind of obscures my vision a little bit but aside from that though you do have a nice interior here some models could have had wood trim depending on the interior options on it but everything else is pretty much leather i mean everything you touch is leather seating leather steering wheel the door cards everything has some nice materials on it now you might find that some of the controls come from mercedes-benz like the selector for the gear the turn signal and also the window controls those are from mercedes-benz which makes sense tesla you know they're, they're a small manufacturer it's easier for them just to buy those parts in bulk than it is to make their own window switches right but you do have a lot i mean i'm talking a lot of control from this vehicle we have power folding mirrors we have a power steering wheel power seats up front here with pretty much unlimited driver memory options unlike pretty much every car that we drive that there's a couple buttons to be able to select which drive mode you're in the computer does it all for you. you just go into the driver profile and you can set all of your settings through there and you can have if you have 10 people that need to drive the car you can have it in there along with an easy entry and exit and a valet mode so the possibilities are pretty much unlimited with the infotainment system now we do have dual zone climate control so both front passengers can control Control their own temperature we have air vents in the center here for the rear seats there is no third zone back there which is fine but one thing again that I have not seen on any other vehicle is all five seats in this vehicle have heat now that is a first for me you go into the infotainment system click on the seats and you can actually turn on the heated seats for all five so the three passengers in the back have heated options for them now before i get into the big screen the driver has a 12.3 inch computer cluster we usually see that size so it's about the same size that we're seeing today and again this is a five-year-old vehicle and that shows you your watt hours per kilometer being used along with some information about what's going on immediately if you have navigation running it will show you your turn by turn on the left side of the screen or by default i've got it set up for the music to display so it's more for your quick glance to see what's going on down there it's not meant for you to be paying attention to it all the time so that's why there isn't a ton of information there which is the whole reason you have a 17 inch screen in the center now again for the updated model coming out this coming you know, cycle this will be changing from this portrait style to a landscape style screen but this is a portrait style 17 inch screen and it does feel like a computer we have all the information all the controls everything through this system a gorgeous navigation system using google maps as well as tesla's own proprietary driving root system you have the ability to go into your music change to xm radio radio your own phone some other apps like spotify are built into it as well you can control everything for the car through here as well as the headlights things that you would normally have buttons for pretty much everything is on the infotainment system your only real physical buttons here are the hazard switch the glove box and then your window controls everything else is controlled through the infotainment system and if you're like me you haven't driven a tesla before you might be confused how to turn the vehicle on there is no power button you don't have a button to turn it on or off you just put your foot on the brake and it turns on automatically i mean it'll turn on anyway the infotainment system when you get in the car and it detects your key but just to go you just put your foot on the brake and select the gear now another thing that's interesting unique to the tesla experience here is the home link system it's not a button system on your visor or your mirrors it's actually built into the infotainment system 
to set it up goes through the steps very easy to figure it out you just follow the steps but what i like about it is it knows where you're setting it up so it assumes hey you know you're setting up your garage door to open so when you're coming to your house i'm going to open it for you automatically when you're leaving your house i'm going to close it for you automatically but again everything else is controlled through the infotainment system along with some what they call entertainment and toy box so there are games built into the system so you can play if you're parked and you're waiting for picking somebody up or whatever it may be you've got games built into it along with a toy box or some fun things in there like a fart noise and rainbow road if you turn on the autopilot system so you can play along with that i'm not going to spend a ton of time on there because i'm sure there's a million videos out there going over it but those features are there you have a built-in web browser and all the information about charging the vehicle also goes through the infotainment system i mean everything you need to do on this car happens on this screen and it works really well i'm impressed at how fluid it is the system itself is using a nvidia tegra 3 system on a chip and then the driver's cluster is using a tegra 2 so these are powerful computers built into this vehicle which again is why we're bringing you back to the whole fact that this really is a computer on wheels coming from a tech background it definitely feels that way now I could stay here all day talking about it in the driveway, but I think you would much prefer to see it on the road in action. So let's take it on the road, see how this vehicle drives, performs, and handles, how the dual motor system works, the overall performance of this, and why there's so many people who are diehard Tesla enthusiasts, even though the company hasn't been around that long. You know, a lot of people talked about how the Tesla Model S was an S-Class competitor, but it's not. It's an executive car. It's a full-size, you know, normal sedan, but that makes it an executive car, a mid-size luxury vehicle. So it would be more in line with something like a BMW 5 Series or a Mercedes E-Class. I definitely get that. Based on space on here would definitely be true. It's not like you have ample room throughout, but it's similar to what you would get on a full-size consumer sedan or that executive car. Pricing is quite a bit. It's one of the things about this is this vehicle is about $105,000 Canadian brand new. And that was before any options. And this is well equipped. You do get quite a bit for a 2016, but we just have a regular backup camera. There's no 360 camera. And there are some other features that we could have added onto this to have more tech. But this is pretty well equipped for what you would see here in the Canadian market. Because people, as much as they love Teslas, they're still buying the electric car because they want to save money on fuel. And what's the point of saving money on fuel? if you're spending a whole bunch of money on the car itself right that's what's really great about driving it in the used market is this is about half the price it was when it was brand new you're getting a hell of a deal and you're only losing a bit of range i mean i've had pretty close to 400 kilometers fully charged on this so you know, you're not losing much it's great for what you're getting for now let's talk about how this vehicle performs and drives first thing that i noticed is it is smooth on the road very comparable again to other executive luxury cars that we've driven the interior road noise is great i think there's a lot of sound insulation on here to help now to be fair if you get the sunroof it's it's like this all the time there's no shade on it it is heavily tinted but i believe you can get some of them without the sunroof depending on your market and i guess the type of vehicle you can get without so it depends on what you want out of it i mean i like it the controls are all through the infotainment system so it's a little weird if you want to open up the sunroof you can also do it through the the gauge cluster computer there is a, a small set of controls through there to be able to do things like your temperature music phone and the sunroof so we're not going to open it today but the idea is it's all there and it's all through the infotainment once you get used to it it's really good it took me a little while there is a bit of a learning curve when it comes to this vehicle but that's to be expected i mean tesla isn't your traditional car company because they weren't a car company they didn't exist up until a little while ago so they've basically started from scratch now i know the original roadster was based off a of lotus but this car was built from tesla from the ground up as its own vehicle so they had to learn a lot of things along the way and they do things differently than your traditional automaker which is again why the infotainment system controls everything for them it makes sense maybe for us not so much but once you get used to it you understand why they've done it this way well, the rest of the car though drives very smooth and you have very good performance out of it and i don't want to be using too much performance because uh, i do need to charge up the battery on this and because it's not my car i don't have access to the supercharger network which is a bit of a bummer but 
you can get up to speed insanely fast with this. That is the first thing that you'll notice when you get into a Tesla. All of those videos, all of the reports, everybody who says that they are insanely fast, they are. And this doesn't even have things like ludicrous mode. We just have the regular mode. There's chill, so you can chill out, you know, use a little bit less throttle response. And we've got it in normal mode right now. So we're using the normal amount of throttle response and it still works really, really well. I'm very impressed with how well this car performs. And again, it's an electric, it's a dual motor. It's the only electric car that we've driven in this segment, fully electric, that has all wheel drive, which is really nice in the winter. Daylight today though, it's nice out. You don't really need it, but you've got it there for the performance if you wanted to. And there's a lot of controls for it too. You know, if you're the type of person who still feels like you're driving, or you still wanna feel like you're driving an internal combustion engine vehicle, you can have it set up so when you take your foot off the brake, the car creeps forward just like a regular gas car would. This one's set up normally, so when you take your foot off the brake, it doesn't do anything until you put your foot on the gas, but you've got options. That's what I really like because it's all controlled through this computer. The opportunities are endless, essentially. And the fact that it keeps getting updates is great. They're adding new features. There was an update when I picked this up that we did and it added some functionality and changed things. You know, customer feedback is so important. And we talk about that. We talk about that when we drive Mazda's vehicles. They'll take their customer feedback and they'll apply those changes to the next model year. They'll make each vehicle better. But the great thing is, because everything is controlled through the computer here, you can do a lot of customer feedback changes and apply it to people in the field immediately or near immediately. If there's problems with the software or you wanna add new features that are software based, you can do that. And that's great, it's, that's gonna be the future. When people talk about how Tesla will be, you know, sort of the benchmark for the future when it comes to luxury cars and electric cars in general, now I understand it. I didn't before, but now that I've driven it, now that I've experienced this for the time that I have, I completely get it. And I can see how people, they drink the Kool-Aid and they believe, because it's true, this is such, a unique experience that you can really fall in love with the company. It's very easy to fall in love with the company. You see what they're doing, you see their vision. You know, maybe it's not gonna pan out completely the way that Elon Musk wants it to, but man, like there is so much enthusiasm from the company that it really is, it's infectious in a way. You really do wanna believe in it. You really do want that amazing experience and you do get it with this, even though this is not a new car. I can still feel it. I still taste that Kool-Aid in my mouth and it's not a bad thing at all. All right, so let's use a little bit of electricity here. You can see, oh, buddy. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I can only imagine how fast either ludicrous or plaid mode is with this vehicle. If you had the performance models, you had the newer ones, this is still plenty good. I mean, Again, the reason you're buying an electric car, the most people who are buying an electric car, they're buying it because they want something that is going to save the money in the long run, or it's the environmental impact that the vehicle has overall. So you don't really wanna be flooring it and ripping it everywhere you go, and that's fine. With a vehicle like this, you have the option to do both. And I just like driving it normally. Yes, it's fun to be able to go quick with it, but I really do just drive the way an electric car should be driven. And you do sort of forget, aside from the fact that it is so quiet in here, I do feel like I'm driving something that does cost $100,000. You've got the tech, you've got the features, you've got the feel on the inside here. It's definitely above what you would get from other electric cars. And that's, again, why Tesla is so important to watch. It's not just putting an electric battery and motor system in a vehicle. They're looking at ways that they can improve how vehicles are made, how vehicles are supposed to interact with the humans inside of them. And I think that it's very interesting. I'm very, very excited to see what the future holds because the updated Model S, uh, it's starting to change things about how we perceive a vehicle. And I'm gonna be interested to see those on the road. New steering wheel that really isn't a steering wheel. It's more car focused, the car doing the work for you. So the future is definitely going to be an interesting one. And this is the stepping stone to get there. Now we're going to go back to the studio. I want to talk about some of the things to look out for if you're in the market for a used Tesla Model S so that you're better informed. If it's a vehicle that you want to buy, and you want to save about half the price off the original MSRP. There are a couple things that you need to know. 
Now I've definitely enjoyed my time over the past week driving the Tesla Model S here. As I mentioned, it has been a vehicle high on my list to feature, but just one that is so difficult to actually track down. Now I do want to talk about a couple things to look out for when you're buying one of these vehicles. Over the course of the Tesla Model S's run, there have been a lot of changes, both for a physical standpoint, they've had a facelift, and there will be another facelift for 2022, but they've changed a lot of the options for battery packs and which kind of motors you can get. As as I mentioned, the numbers for the vehicle is how many kilowatt hours your vehicle will have. They did sell a small 40 kilowatt hour version. However, it actually used the 60 kilowatt battery pack, but then they just software limited it with the option to add to it. But this one is more or less the sort of mainstream one that was sold here in Canada. The top end being the P100D. That's the performance version with the dual motor system. And then now they're coming out with a triple motor system for the newer model. So there's there's been a lot of changes over the course of this vehicle, but essentially the car is more or less the same. You can get different features and options with it. And for the most part, you're going to be seeing this sort of build when it comes to these vehicles sold here in Canada. Now, one thing that we've researched is the battery packs themselves will lose about 5% of the total charge after about 50,000 kilometers. And then from there, about 1% every 50,000 kilometers more. So this vehicle has about 100,000 kilometers on it. It would have originally done that 426 kilometers fully electric. So it's lost about 6% over the last couple of years that this has been on the road and about 100,000 kilometers. But because the battery is placed underneath the vehicle, it's pretty accessible. Then it is possible to replace the batteries through Tesla if you choose so. So a couple years down the road, you might want to look at doing that. But for the most part, again, this is about average mileage for this vehicle and age. Now, there are some other things to look out for with these vehicles. The door handles, because they're motorized to pop out, they can break over time. So make sure all of them work. Replacing them through Tesla doesn't seem to be too big of a deal, but it is something to keep an eye out for. There's also squeaking and rattling that could develop both from the suspension system, the door fittings, the window seals, and alike. So that's something else. We do notice that the driver's seat squeaks a little bit where the center console meets the armrest and everything. That does have some squeaking going on there, but it's mostly because of the leather is rubbing up against one another. Earlier Tesla Model S's did have drivetrain issues, but it seems to have been pretty much solved by the 2015 and newer models. So depending on what year you're going for, you should be fine. But again, take a look at any service history that would come with the vehicle so that you're better informed. I have found that a lot of owners reported issues with the camera system on the vehicle. And in fact, there is a new recall out for the EMMC controller, which actually affects the rear view camera, as well as the defrost for the rear windshield and turn signals back there. So that's an active recall as of January 2021. So keep that in mind. And there have been a number of other recalls for this specific model year. So check to see if those have been completed before buying it. Overall, if you're buying a vehicle here in Quebec or in Canada, check for rust. They can develop small rust issues along the door trims and panels. There are some issues with the taillights leaking as well. You can get some water or bugs in there. That's something that can be resolved as well. And for the most part, because it's still a new enough vehicle, there isn't a ton that we know about long-term reliability. I do know there are people that drive these things into the hundreds of thousands of kilometer marks without too many serious issues. So it's gonna be hit or miss for the most part, just like with any car, you might find one that is fantastic and then maybe one that's been through too much. So get the vehicle inspected by a trusted mechanic. I know it's a little harder to find a trusted electric mechanic out there, but definitely have that looked at and make sure that the vehicle hasn't been in any serious accidents or damage. Now, one other thing I'll mention is test Tesla does not use the standard SAE J1772 socket for this. That's what we use for our EV duty smart home charger. And that's what you'll find for the most part per any level two charging solution for vehicles sold in North America. They don't use it. They use a proprietary system, both for their level two, their level one, and then their supercharging stations. It's all the same port. You can get adapters for it. The vehicles are supposed to come with adapters if you buy them. So keep that in mind. If you have an electric car station, all already at your house or if you're renting or you're in a condo, you've got something there, you will need to either get an adapter or have a specific Tesla charging solution in order to charge the car up. And there are some limitations when using the adapters no matter what. It's one of the reasons why Tesla is one of those companies that you either love or you hate because if you completely buy into the ecosystem, then you're fine. You just use superchargers across the entire world and you're good to go. But if you're like me, you don't have access to that. It's a bit of a bummer. 
But overall, this vehicle has lived up to everything that I expected it would do. It is comfortable, it is spacious, it does have the power and performance that you would want out of an electric performance oriented sedan. And I do understand why people like their Teslas so much. Again, I wanna give a big thanks to Ash Gregoire for letting me feature this vehicle, letting me keep this car for an entire week so I could really get used to it. Because if I only had this for a couple hours, I don't think I would have had enough time to really understand what makes this car so special. If you have any questions about it, please leave a comment below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do. And until next time, thanks for watching and take care.